السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم. Well, last time we were discussing the beautiful teachings of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to his ummah and how it is important to be kind and gentle with your spouse and so on. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that خيركم خيركم لأهله. The best of you are those who are good to their family members. to their spouses, to their children. وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ And I'm the best of you to my family. So being good inside and being good outside is complimentary. It shows that you're a good believer. But being good before people, and when you come home, you have a frown face, and you start shouting and getting angry at the least thing, is disapproved, is refused totally by the Prophet ﷺ, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it true that uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to kneel down like, uh, like this and let uh, Sophia climb up onto the, the camel That's like that? That's absolutely true. You just imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would let his wife climb on his knee so that she can get on the back of her camel. Mm -hmm. That happened with Sophia. May Allah be pleased with her. Not only that, once there was a noise and Aisha was in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was in her room and... The noise was all about that some Abyssinians were uh, playing with their spears, the, some sort of dance, traditional dance. So she was in, interested in watching. So the Prophet ﷺ invited them inside the masjid to watch. Mm -hmm. And Aisha, عنها, ardaha, she was looking from her room and the Prophet ﷺ was covering her with his outer garment. And she was looking, placing her head on the shoulder of the Prophet ﷺ next to his head. And the Prophet ﷺ never asked her to quit. He was waiting until she was satisfied and said, enough. She said, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> then he waited. He waited until she said, that's enough. The Prophet ﷺ have time to do that to his wife. And she was just one of them. Yes. It is very, very important to keep in mind that giving a good treatment to your wife, to your family, is a sign of being a good believer. Well, was it probably because Aisha is still small in, in, in terms of that? Uh, no, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, your wife has rights upon you. And as I said that, if you are seeking happiness and pleasure, you have to give because life is all about give and take. You can just mm -hmm. take and not give. Mm -hmm. One more thing, Shay. Uh, we get back to the same thing. You were talking about uh, a husband should give some rights to the woman, but... On this world right now, we saw men uh, believing that I'm, I'm in charge and my wife has to listen to me and obey me and things like that. What you have to is that is that considered like... Remember my advice to you initially when I said that we should not confuse <coughs> what's religious and cultural together and mm -hmm. say this is a part of religion. This is what people do nowadays. Mm -hmm. and so people who come from some parts of the world and they assume that a man is like a god at home. That nobody else has a say. Nobody else would say a word or discuss or argue with him. The word is his. Mm -hmm. uh, this is simply can be described in one word as dictatorship. <laughs> Real leadership <laughs> yeah. is to be kind, is to be gentle, is to be wise. Yes, you make the decision, but nothing wrong with consulting your wife. Mm -hmm. consulting the Prophet even uh, consulted his wives. In he did decisions. that a lot. He like did that a lot, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed that the, 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 the difference of uh, some brothers I had who had two or three wives. When, they, when, when he had one wife, he was walking nicely, holding hands, things like that. So soon after he got two wives or three wives, he couldn't hold hands. Now he got to defend so that he won't give one jealousy on the other side and one jealousy on this side. <laughs> what, <do you> <laughs> what, I, what I noticed here, Ahmed, that uh, 
You've been talking a lot about uh, having more than one wife. <laughs> no, I'm still one. I am still one. <laughs> so, Abdul Rahman, uh, being a man at home doesn't mean that you shout and you scream and you scare everybody. No. Uh, you can be a leader and gentle, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. His wives would argue with him sometimes. And sometimes one of his wives would even desert him to the end of the day. Yeah. Once in the view, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Aisha, Ya Aisha, I know whenever you're mad at me. She said, and how is that? He said, well, whenever you're mad at me, you say, La wa Rabbi Muhammad. You swear by saying, I swear, uh, whenever you're mad at me, you say, La wa Rabbi Ibrahim. I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And that means, you don't even want to pronounce my name. And whenever you're <laughs> pleased with me, you say, La wa Rabbi Muhammad. I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. She said, Ya Rasulullah, by Allah, I only desert your name. I can't keep away from you. But it's just a sign that to show me, maybe I'm upset. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, conflicts happen. If you ever imagine that you will have a happy life forever in this dunya, that's not mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. Did you think Allah if would conflict, leave you alone? Yeah, if testing? conflicts happen in the, in the life of the Prophet Wasallam, in his houses, with his wives, you know, and he was the greatest man on earth, sallallahu alayhi wa And his wives were the best. Mm -hmm. However, uh, still uh, problems arose. Uh, sometimes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would argue with his wife and their voice would be loud. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would treat the situation with wisdom. Well, Sheikh, what if it's a wife, you know, it really makes you really angry. Sometimes they really make you angry. And how you control it? You know, uh, when the Prophet ﷺ uh, ordered us to be kind and gentle, he did not specify that whenever you're happy and whenever your wife is pleasing you. No. Uh, in every situation, he said, That a believer should not just dislike uh, his wife or his spouse just simply because he does not like certain attitude or she makes him angry at some time or a certain point. Because he should look also to other events, other situations where she makes him happy to keep balance. And really, it's best to keep in mind this ayah as a banner always in your mind, before your eyes, in every situation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Verily, Allah is ever all watcher over you. So you're not alone. Allah is watching you. If you think that yourself have the power and have the authority and you can do everything, you can react, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watching. Mm. So keeping this in mind, also keeping in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, which we discussed before. فَإِن كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also treated situations where a person is, does not like his wife, <laughs> is mad at her. So that if you do, it may be that you dislike something while it's good for you. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put in her a lot of good things. But just wait. Be patient. And patience is a very good quality which a person should adopt at home and outside. And especially with his wife and his children. I heard a, a story of Omar ibn al-Khattab, which actually I, I heard from you. <laughs> so maybe it would be better if if you told the story, then me, since uh, I heard it from you, and you, you, you tell the punchline better. So It was once Umar ibn Khattab saying so that um, uh, before Islam, we have never paid any respect to women. We use not to consider that they have any rights whatsoever. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the rights of women in the Quran and giving them a share in the inheritance and etc., uh, once... I was handling some affairs, and there my wife interfered. So I told her that this is none of your business. 
Why do you talk about that? She said, are you better than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Since his wives used to argue with him, he said, oh, do they do? Because Umar's daughter was married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he sat out quickly and he went to his wife, Hafsa. Do you guys argue with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? She said, yes. One of us would argue with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And sometimes even that argument would last for a whole day. <laughs> you know? So one have to keep in mind that perfection is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're looking for an absolute perfection, it's only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And if this would happen in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it's very to possible to happen in everybody's house. <laughs> Once, as a matter of fact, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had a conflict with Aisha. Remember, Amr ibn al-As once asked him, whom do you love the most? He said, Aisha. However, still, once he had a conflict with her. So they saw the judgment of Abu Bakr, Aisha's father, and the best friend of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him. So as he came to hear the story, you see how merciful was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, asking somebody to be a judge between him and his wife, and whom his father in law. So he said, Ya Aisha, would you like to talk first? Or shall I talk? She said, no, go ahead and talk first. But only say the truth. Mm -hmm. Abu Bakr Siddiq, hearing that coming from the mouth of his daughter, saying to the Prophet Sallallahu only said the truth, he couldn't bear that. So he slapped her over her face mm -hmm. to the point that she bled from her mouth. So she was so scared and she ran away from her father to hide where did she head? Behind the Prophet. Behind the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> The Prophet ﷺ was really mad at Abu Bakr and said, Ya Abu Bakr, we did not call you for this. We call you to reconciliate, not to beat her. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ sets the rule. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا This ayah we have to keep repeating and reminding ourselves that our best role model is Rasulullah is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If this is happening in his house, then we should follow his footsteps in handling those situations. You were telling us a story earlier also about following the footsteps where I forget who it was, uh, but his wife used to always be really pretty. And one day she went to uh, Aisha and she wasn't pretty anymore. And she said, uh, Uthman ibn... Ibn Maz'oon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, inshallah, hopefully we'll talk about that after we break for the salah. It's already salah time. And we'll see you after the salah. Assalamu alaikum. trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on, they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ It's one of the best things in life is to offer the Salah in Jama'ah. Ah, this is very magnificent. Praise be to Allah who made it easy for us to offer the Salah in, in Jama'ah. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. You know that for every prayer we pray in congregation, it exceeds any other prayer which you pray by yourself 27 times more. Mm. So the prayer itself is a beautiful thing, but then yeah. we do it and you get 27 yeah. times more. Uh, you know? I remember you were reminding me with the story of uh, Uthman ibn Mazrun. He was a great companion, um, however, he was so into 
deen and religion, praying at night, fasting during the day. And his wife was known as, you know, she was a pretty woman. She used to take care of herself, you know, uh, wear perfume and uh, henna and so on. So one day she came to visit Aisha, the Prophet's wife. May Allah be pleased with her. May Allah. And uh, Aisha noticed that uh, she was not taking care of herself. She was not really wearing her regular makeup and the henna and so on. She said, what is the matter with you? So she understood, but she said, you know, Osman has no interest in the dunya anymore. He has no interest in women to begin with. At that, the Prophet ﷺ walked in. So Aisha shared the news with the Prophet ﷺ because this matter is very important. Mm -hmm. One of her sisters mm -hmm. is complaining and, you know, so the Prophet ﷺ invited Uthman ibn Mav'oon, may Allah be pleased with him, and said, Ya Uthman, do you believe in what we believe in? I said, definitely, Ya Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, so, so, so. well, if you do, then you do what we do. Mm -hmm. You follow our footsteps. You follow our tradition. Mm -hmm. You take care of your wife. So Uthman ibn Mav'oon, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu arda, understood what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant. Keeping balance between uh, what do you yourself need, uh, pile up hasanat in prayer and fasting and so on, and what your wife and family need is very, very important. Won't that also be piling up hasanat? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think Shay is what, what is the quality of being, uh, to be a good wife? And, yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said once, there is nothing a person can achieve better than having a good wife after being a righteous himself. Mm -hmm. Then he said that those qualities of the righteous wife is whenever you look at her, she pleases you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, we all agree. Yes, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> we agree with that. And yeah, so you just want to agree upon. Whenever you ask her by Allah to do anything, she fulfills. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as it doesn't contradict with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Mm. A woman who obeys her Lord as well. A woman whom whenever her husband is away or absent, she guards his wealth, his positions, and she protects her chastity. Mm. Those are the qualities of a righteous woman, which if you have, you will definitely be happy. Oh, what are the qualities of a wicked woman? <laughs> <laughs> Before that, yes, Ba'i. <laughs> you all know Sa'id ibn Musayyib, one of the great uh, uh, tabi'een, followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He had such a very righteous daughter mm -hmm. who learned everything her father had learned. So once, after finishing the entire Qur'an, her father was discussing with her. She said that, I understood every ayah in the Qur'an except for one ayah. This ayah is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to supplicate saying, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina azaban nar. Which means, our Lord, grant us a goodly reward in the life of this world and a goodly reward in the hereafter and protect us against the fire of hell. She said, I understand what's the goodly reward of the hereafter, which is obviously paradise. Mm -hmm. But what's the goodly reward of the, of the yeah, life of the this dunya, world? Yeah. The dunya, sure. Naam, yeah, exactly. Guess what? People spouse. have uh, different views. Somebody could say, every good thing we have, health, wealth, you know, children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sayyid ibn Musayb said that Hasanat al-Dunya is a righteous wife. And he's so right, because if you have a righteous wife, it will make your life happy. Of course. Yeah. Will yeah. raise your children, children properly. <laughs> Good <laughs> kids. Yeah. Whenever you have a problem, she would help you out to solve the problem. Whenever you are in affliction, she would stand next to you. Mm -hmm. And all of that would support you to be a better servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and accordingly you would be able to achieve, hopefully, inshallah, hasanatul akhirah. The goodly reward of the hereafter, paradise. Mm -hmm. Now back to my question about <laughs> how can he spot a wicked woman? <laughs> Compare this. The Prophet <laughs> said, uh, amongst the components of happiness are four. A righteous wife, mm -hmm. 
a spacious house, a good neighbor, mm -hmm. and a good ride. A good ride, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a good ride. Yeah. He didn't say the best, the best, the best. He said a good wife, a good neighbor, a spacious house, and a good ride. Mm -hmm. And he also said, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. and among the components of distress, a wicked, a, wife. <laughs> a wicked wife, mm -hmm. a bad neighbor, a narrow house, no, huh? very small, and, and a bad ride, a, and a bad ride. Oh, yes. or not having a ride at <laughs> all. <laughs> this is my ride. <laughs> <laughs> so, there the Prophet ﷺ explains what really would make a person happy. Not necessarily that you have uh, to achieve uh, to be the richest, mm. and you married to the prettiest, mm -hmm. and you have a palace. No. It will be sufficient, as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in one hadith, uh, whoever spend the night while having security, mm. while healthy, okay. and having enough food for one day, he's mm. a king. He owns this dunya and what it contains, because this is all what you need in this dunya, security, mm. health, and food enough for one day. Mm -hmm. What have you been thinking about, Abdul Rahman? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, what about like uh, when the wife... In the beginning, she was really righteous, but during our marriage, because uh, maybe because of her neighbor, the wife, or We're talking about influence, she, yeah, she get influenced and she become she becomes more dunya waya, more uh, attracted to dunya than religion. How how would I manage to handle the situation? It's actually a very important role that the husband have to play mm -hmm. as a teacher and as a maintainer. You maintain the level of Iman of your household, not only your wife, your family members, and those who are under your guardianship. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is very important to know that uh, who uh, hang around your wife, mm -hmm. the friends, the family members. Mm -hmm. And you have all the right to ask her not to hang around those people because, for instance, they have a bad reputation or they give her a bad influence because it's your right to protect your family. Mm -hmm. it's, this is all about <laughs> protection and qawama and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we get angry. Sometimes we lose our temper, you mm -hmm. know. No, exactly. uh, so. And people vary in that respect. So the Prophet sallallahu mm -hmm. mm -hmm. says that shall I not tell you about the best of women of paradise? This is certainly a Rasulullah. He said, it's a woman whom whenever her husband gets angry with her, she puts her hand in his hand and she said that, I will never get rest until you are happy with me. Mm, it doesn't mean that every time and every situation that it has to be the wife who have to begin by saying, I'm sorry, forgive me. No. It also indicates that if you are at fault, if your wife is angry, if she has a situation where she is under stress, that you have to play that role. You have to be the merciful husband, the merciful father. But what if your wife is um, just like ungrateful? You know what I mean? It has that characteristic where she's just ungrateful. Unfortunately, this is one of the worst characteristics. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once at Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that. It was a Eid day and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed the community with a speech. Then afterward, he addressed women in particular with a speech and he said, Oh women, donate generously since I have found that most of you are amongst the dwellers of fire. And this is very disturbing news. We understand that, you know, fire or the fire of hell was prepared for the wicked ones, mm -hmm. uh, whether men or women, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so he yes, have warned women against the fire of hell in particular. They said, and how is that, Ya Rasulullah, and why? He said, it's particularly because many of you have this bad quality, which is kufran wal ashir. What's kufran wal ashir? That a woman would forget all the good moments, all the gifts, all the happy moments, and would only remember the bad, bad. things. And that happens at the time of anger. Yeah. And She's not grateful to Allah. She's not grateful to her husband. Mm -hmm. She's always demanding. So if a woman have this quality, which is a very bad and evil one, 
The Prophet ﷺ is warning her against that. A person have to be thankful. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Prophet ﷺ says, whoever does not give thanks to people is not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. So a person have to be appreciative to everything, especially between a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. And actually when, when she even does that, Allah, it even decreases the love in the house. Absolutely. Yeah. That affects negatively uh, not only love, the it threatens the marriage life. Yes. Marriage life, yeah. Remember the advice which um, Abdullah ibn Ja'far ibn Abi Talib was paying to his daughter saying that, huh? beware of complaining. Mm. Don't complain too mm. much because that will work. destroy your life mm. and that will create hatred. Mm. Try to focus on uh, the positive things. Similarly, you as a husband, remember good things. If you don't like some, uh, some attitude, look at another one which is better in your wife and focus on that. So we have to play a role of giving more sabr in a situation to, to, to balance the situation Absolutely. that we are facing. Nah. In True. Other words. Mm. So basically we have to be good husbands if we want good wives. That's true. That's true. <laughs> How come you keep telling me stuff like that, Sheikh Mohammed? How come you keep saying, you know, if you want good kids, you got to be a good Muslim. If you want a good a Muslim wife, you have to be a good Muslim man. That's an equation. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ gave a nice uh, good news to women in particular saying that uh, if a woman prays her five daily prayers mm -hmm. and fasts during the month of Ramadan, obeys her husband and keeps devoutly obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the gates of paradise will be open wide for her and it will be said to her, enter paradise from whichever gate you desire. Mm -hmm. You see? So you enjoy in this life and you're promised with the reward of paradise in the hereafter. May Allah grant all of us Amen. a happy life <coughs> and admit us into his paradise. Amen. Am I as good as you in poetry though? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're running out of time. Yeah, I got actually, I got to go. I got to go to the dentist appointment. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.